So it's it's the one everybody wants. I want you to go to page 88, jump over to the general warranty deed. Because in that general warranty deed, it has five covenants or promises that it will make. And I want to go through these five promises. All right. So the first one is called the covenant of session. The covenant of session. This, I'm telling you now, the book, the test, the state, the back of the book, my test, love this term because people forget what it is. And I told you that the test can get two questions out of you by giving you this term as one of the answers. And you're going to have to remember, oh, that's in the general warranty deed. That has nothing to do with financing. So there's never a direct defined as work kind of question. They will just throw these words in and you have to understand what it means. The covenant of session says, I have the right and I have the title, so I have the right to transfer it to you. I'm promising you it's my property and I have the right to do this, all right? So that's the very first one it's telling you. The second one is called the covenant against encumbrances. <clears throat> it's saying here, I will remove all of the encumbrances on the property that I can. All right. We're going to do encumbrances. Have we done them yet? We're going to do them where it talks about like an easement, a shared driveway. Those type of encumbrances, I can't get rid of. Matter of fact, you hear those and they, you often see them called run with the land. A shared driveway, everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? Two houses, maybe share one driveway. That would be an encumbrance on one of the properties. It's someone else using your property. I can't get rid of that. I can't get rid of a power line easement. I can't get rid of the water company easement. So those run with the land. There is this thing called a closing, which is like a magic black box. All of these encumbrances go into the closing. The ones I can get rid of, like my mortgage or taxes, but then I also have an easement, like the power line easement. We go to this magic black box called a closing, and when we come out, I promise the covenant against encumbrances in the general warranty deed, which says I will take care of the ones I can. Some of them I cannot, and therefore they come out on the other side of this closing and this is hard as heck to write. So those run with the land. The other term you've heard is survive the closing. The taxes I paid off, the mortgage I paid off. So I am promising you I owe the property, covenant of session. I will remove all of the liens on there so there will be nothing there for you to have to worry about. The third one is I'm promising you the covenant of enjoyment or quiet enjoyment. Remember, that was one of the five rights. This is saying, I'm telling you, there's nobody out there coming after the property. You know about my mortgage. It got recorded, so I'll pay it off. You know there's real estate taxes. It's on there, so I'll pay it off. But I'm telling you, there's nobody else out there coming after you for this property. So I'm promising you this quiet enjoyment. That's the third thing I'm promising. The fourth thing is, no, I was wrong on that quiet enjoyment. My bad, I didn't even know it. I promised you there was nothing I knew about. I didn't even know this. So I promise you the covenant of further assurance.
Looks like a retarded St. Bernard right now, Matt. Further assurance says, if I was wrong about quiet enjoyment, I promise to help you solve that problem. Okay, I own the property. I will remove all of the encumbrances that I can. There's nobody out there coming after the property. If I was wrong about that, I promise to help you. That's the further assurance. And then the fifth one is, I promise these forever, forever. If you've ever bought a property and sold it through a general warranty deed, dude, you're still in the loop, all right? Because you made this promise forever. Now, technically it would be your insurance company, not necessarily you, but you've made these five promises they're called a covenant or warranties and you're saying look dude i own the property i'll take all the encumbrances off there's no one out there coming after you if there is i promise to help you and i promise to do this forever those are the five covenants of a general warranty deed what more could a person really ask for not much all right so this is the highest form the transfer is this general warranty deed. This is probably what you bought when you bought your house you're living in now or any of the others, okay? So flip back over there to page 86 and look at the second bullet point. The second bullet point says, I, Raymond Modulin, remise, release, alienate, and convey. This is not a general warranty deed. This. The second version is this thing called a special warranty deed. A special warranty deed. Now, typically, you will hear the term warranty deed. That means general by default. If they want to mention or talk about a special warranty deed, they will always call it a special warranty deed. So a lot of times you hear the title company go, hey, is this being transferred by warranty deed? They're meaning general. That's the default verbiage. If they say special warranty deed, they will literally say special warranty deed. And a special warranty deed grants not five, but two, two warranties, all right? The first one, and if you look over on page eight, uh, 89, there is a special warranty deed. A special warranty deed says, hey, we own the property. And while I owned it, the time frame in which I owned it, I did not encumber the property. I wasn't put, I didn't put another lien on it. I wasn't involved in a lawsuit. There was no easements created. None of that. So it's only promising you two. I own the property and the time frame in which I owned it, I did nothing to encumber it. Notice what it's missing. It's missing further assurance. It's not promising you that there's, oh, well, it's missing quiet enjoyment. That's the first one. It's not promising you that there is nobody out there coming after it. It's not giving you that promise. It's certainly not promising further assurance. We're not going to help you. And we're damn well not promising it forever. The only time frame in which they're guaranteeing is the time frame in which they owned it. Prior to that, there is no warranty forever. Okay, who sells by special warranty deed? Banks, banks love to sell by special warranty deed. So if anybody's seen those bank owned homes or you know a friend that's bought a bank owned home, when the bank sells it, they sell it under special warranty deed. Now realize that the seller is the one that makes this decision. 
if you ask for a general warranty deed from the bank, they're going to go, uh, no, we are not ponying up that kind of protection. We are only going to pony up this time frame by which we owned it, and we guarantee that we did own it. That is a special warranty deed. I told you that general warranty deed is literally in our purchase agreement. If you ever act as a buyer's agent for a bank owned home, the first thing the bank does is counter back to you, no general warranty deed, it will be transferred by a special warranty deed. The bank wants out of that responsibility. All right, so let me ask you a question. Now, I yesterday or the other day, we proved that no two properties were the same. But let's wave a magic wand in Raymond's world, which is where I am the head supreme king of. I am the king of Raymond's world. And I'm going to make these two properties exactly equal, except for one is going to sell with a general warranty deed. One is going to sell with a special warranty deed. Are these two houses equal value? Yes or no? Don't everybody jump at one time. They are not equal value simply because of the protection the buyer is getting. In a general warranty deed, they're getting this quiet enjoyment. They're getting warranty forever. They're getting all of this further assurance where the bank is not. So if I sold you a house through general warranty deed and Sears came knocking at your door and they went, hey, Shauna, we put a roof on this house five years ago. Uh, you need to pony up for it now because you're the owner of the house. Shauna's going to go, well, hold on a minute. I didn't own the property. She's going to call me and go, hey, dude, you promised me general warranty deed. You promised me quiet enjoyment. Sears is knocking at my door. You promised me further assurance. You've got to help me. And it's warranty forever. I'm like, yeah, I, I did that. I forgot about it. So I'll help you. That's what a general warranty deed would do. Now, same situation. She buys a house from the bank. Sears comes knocking at the door. We put a house, roof on this house five years ago. We're putting a mechanics lien. You need to pony up. She calls the bank and goes, hey, I bought a special warranty deed. The bank's going to go, no, dude, not our issue. We told you that we were not promising quiet enjoyment, which means there could be somebody out there. And obviously, Sears is now knocking. We also promised you, or didn't promise you rather, further assurance. We're not gonna help you. And we certainly didn't promise it forever. And that time frame was before we owned it. You're out. So that difference in value just due to that protection increases the risk of the buyer of a bank owned home. How much is that risk? I don't know. That's up to you to decide when you're buying that home. It certainly wouldn't be the same value as the home you're getting all the protection on. So in theory, it is lower in value by some number and that number is decided upon you as the buyer that you can negotiate with the bank. So now you start to see how people talk about all the bank owned homes driving down values in the property or in the neighborhood. You know, you got a value here and then Mary Sue went to foreclosure, got uh, repossessed, sold on the market, it sold here. So now the next person comes in and uses comps. This is where they're at. And then another person goes into foreclosure and then comes back out and the bank comes value in here now lower than the last one sold. And then you can see how this game is played. So how bank owned properties can actually drive down values. And we're not even talking about the disrepair because it's set for three years. I'm literally talking about a perfect house doesn't give you the same protection. Cameron, you got a question? I was just going to ask um, for a special warranty deed is all auction houses like auction, like uh, sold houses. 
a sold under special two. It warranty. depends how the auction. It depends what kind of auction it is. I mean, there are people that are true sellers that actually can take their house to auction who may give a general warranty deed. If, so if it's an case. auction for a bank owned home, yeah, it would be dependent upon the seller. I know, I know guys that instead of listing their house in a normal scenario, they just hired an auction company and sold it that way. So in that particular case, that seller would offer up a general warranty deed because it was his home. I know banks or guys that have done auctions for bank owned homes and the bank will dictate that this home is being sold special warranty deed. That would be in the instructions on the auction. All right. So that the auction mechanism doesn't determine the deed type. It would be who's selling the property. And that's true of any case. You could literally sell your home tomorrow in a quick claim deed. There's no rule that says you have to sell it through a general warranty. The fact is it gives you the highest value and you want the most money. So most people always sell through a general warranty deed. All right. <clears throat> so that's the second granting clause that could be in there. The remise, release, alienate, convey means special warranty deed. It has two. Go flip back to the other one. I, Raymond Modulin, grant, bargain, and sell. This is called a bargain and sale deed. This would be like a sheriff sale deed. It doesn't even have two guarantees anymore. It literally has one, listen to the words coming out of my mouth, implication. It's not even a guarantee. Well, we're pretty sure we own it. All right. When the sheriff sells a house and you get a sheriff's deed, it in fact is a bargain and sale deed, which is we're pretty sure we own it because the bank told us they did. The bank took it in foreclosure, gave it to us to sell and said, hey, we just own this property. We want you to sell it. So the sheriff sells it at an auction. And here's a good case for you, Cameron, where the sheriff would actually sell it as a bargain and sale deed. 